a world above the clouds called God's Finger, where a small child named Percival, who sees a rocky bird flying in the sky, he doesn't have anything to catch the bird with so he calls out to his grandfather and tells him to look at the sky. His grandfather who is indeed a powerful man sees this bird and says that it has been a long time since I saw such a bird and then he hits the bird and the bird falls down. Percival runs and catches the bird while he falls down but luckily he survives. They take the bird home and cook it. The next day they both wrestle. While washing the dishes at the stream, Grandpa remembers something and runs to Percival and tells him that tomorrow is your birthday and you will be 16 years old. The next day they both go to a higher place. Grandpa asks him, Don't you think I wanna fly off this god's finger and go on a journey around the world? The enormous shadow that you can faintly see occasionally beyond the sea of clouds. Percival says, That is the Iceland of sky people that you told me about before. Grandpa replies the island is said to have been created by the goddess clan called sky people. Percival asks, You have not actually seen it yourself. Grandpa says that because I can't fly but below where we live, there exists a vast Britannia and it is filled with thrilling adventure and mystery. There are twisting towers where eccentric magicians dwell and the knights who sail a phantom ship through the sky. There is also a large cave with countless openings that lead to hell, an evil lake princess that tempt heroes and imprison them, labyrinthine forests, from which you can never escape and you will lose your way. Then he asks, how does that sound? Percival says, let us catch the skyfish then he starts fishing there. While eating fish at night, Grandpa tells him that when his father turned 16, he got out of the house as fast as he could to go on an adventure. Percival says to Grandpa while making an arrow, let's catch some rocky lizards tomorrow, there are super huge lizards. While drinking, Grandfather says something to which Percival replies, whatever happens, I'll make sure to protect you. He says, I can't go so senile that my grandchild has to protect me. At night, when Grandfather falls into a deep sleep, Percival secretly gets up and goes to the same place where Grandfather told him about the adventure. Then he thinks of all these adventures and mysteries and runs happily there. Meanwhile he has a dream in which his Grandfather is calling him but he cannot hear his Grandfather's voice. Suddenly a boat arrives there, from which a knight descends and asks him, Do you happen to know a man by the name of Varghese? Percival replies, That is my Grandpa's name and who are you? He says, I am just an old friend from when we were holy knights. I have a very important matter for which I want to meet your grandfather. Percival tells him that across this hill is our house. My grandfather is cooking breakfast and can I sit on your boat? He allows Percival to sit on the boat and then goes to Varghese. Then the knight performs his cross magic on Varghese and tells, You use the sword that you have been honored with by his majesty as a kitchen knife. Still the same old you. It has been 16 years since we betrayed our master and fled. I did not expect you to be living carefully in such a remote land. Varghese replies, It was your side who turned against him, I only abandoned him. Then they both fight but Varghese gets injured. Percival becomes suspicious of the knight and runs to them and attacks the knight with a stone but to no avail. Knight injures both of them. Varghese asks him, Why did you come to kill me only now? He replies, A few days ago an ominous prophecy was made. The arrival of an existence that will lead our Lord King Arthur to his doom and they are named the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. Their identities and details are still unclear. If that is the case until we reap the seeds of that possibility, no matter how low we fall, we can't say for sure that you are not one of those four knights. Then he leaves. They both get up, both badly injured. Percival says to his grandfather, Forgive me, I couldn't protect you. Grandpa hugs him and says, I was the one who needed to protect you, you should not be protecting people like me. From now on you should find something to protect. Trust your heart and find someone important whom you can walk through life with. Percival says, this is definitely a punishment, since I lied to you. The truth is that I really did want to go on an adventure, that is why it has happened. Varghese says, I also lied to you. I was glad when you said you would not feel lonely because we are together. Then asks, you are calm even though you took that much damage. Percival replies T. This feels nothing because for 16 years, I was trained by you every single day. Then Grandpa tells him, that red armored knight's name is Ironside and he is your father. Percival is shocked and says, but you told me that my father died when I was a kid. You are lying. If he is really my father, then why did he do such a thing to us? Grandpa says to him, there is not enough time to explain. If you really want to know you should search for your father. Start your journey. From now on, you will be traveling alone. Percival says I don't want to be alone, I want to be with Grandpa. Grandpa tells him that from now on I will be with you forever and then dies. Percival digs a grave and buries his grandfather. After that he becomes very sad but he starts living his life alone doing all his work by himself. At home he finds a box in which his grandfather had made clothes for him. 
Then many days pass, he wears the same clothes and puts his grandfather's cap on his head, goes to the grave and says that I am leaving, Grandpa. He can't get under the clouds even after climbing down all day, but he keeps trying harder and gets closer to Britannia. Then he jumps from there and falls in one place and thinks that I have finally arrived here. A small animal, like a red fox, comes to him. Percival said, I just climbed down from God's finger, it took me two whole days. Well, do you know any place around here where people like me live? I heard there are things called villages and towns with lots of people. The red fox does not understand any of his words and runs back. Percival runs after it but it hides in the bushes. Percival sees there is a horse carriage with a troop of magicians doing their practice. One of them is a man named Katz and the other is a girl named Elva and third is a boy named Donnie. Percival is very happy to see their practice and says show me again. Donnie says to him, you can't watch this show for free, you have to pay for it, so give us your stuff. Percival gives him his stuff and Donnie tells him, I'll show you my magic and then floats him in the air with magic. Then they all run the horse cart and leave. When the magic wears off on Percival, he lands on the ground and stops them by running. They are surprised to see his speed and return his stuff to him. Percival asks, I am looking for someone, what should I do to find them? I'm looking for Ironside, he is my father and he killed my grandfather. They are very surprised to hear this and say that we do not know about him. Kat says but if you go with us, you can find out about him from the village. Donnie says we won't take you free, you have to do some performance then he takes his archery test. Then they all leave, on the way Kat says to him, we will take you for free. Our troop travels through Britannia, we stopped by towns and villages to put on shows for a living. Further he tells him, we are the Cat Street troop that is a bunch of dropouts whose dream of joining the Holy Knights were crushed. Hearing this Percival says, that man is a Holy Knight, he is my father. On the way, two men stop them and say to help us, a wolf is going on a rampage in the village, use your horse to call the Holy Knights. Donnie says, we'll drive the wolf away ourselves, no need to call the Knights. Then he gallops the horse and says for this work, the villagers will also give us food and a place to stay overnight. But when they look closer, it is a huge wolf. Donnie turns the horse back and says we should call the knights. Percival jumps out and says Grandpa always told me to defeat the evil and help the weak and become someone who protects and risks their life for things they hold dear. I will kill the wolf, but when he shoots arrows, they do not hit the wolf. The wolf attacks him but Donnie comes there and saves him. The wolf attacks him again but he stops it and slaps so hard that the wolf dies on the spot. A knight is watching this whole incident and says I can't believe a little kid can do all this, now I will compete with him next time. People stand near the dead wolf and talk among themselves that there has been rumors of nightmarish monster appear in other villages too. Bandaging his body wounds, Donnie asks where is Percival. Katz tells him Elva took him to the lake at the hill. They both bathe in the river, she also sees his wound which he got due to that cross magic. She drops water on him and says well you clean your head too, the villagers are throwing a welcome party for you. Percival thinks about Donnie and says that he is a nice guy. We just met today, but he risked himself to protect me. Elva says, Donnie probably got influenced by you. That guy probably did not give up on becoming a holy knight. Percival asks what is a holy knight. She replies, those eyes see through evil, that mouth speaks the truth, that heart is filled with justice, that sword smashes evil. These prominent knight possess powerful magic, protecting the kingdom and its people. Percival asks, is that magic, you and Donnie showed me when we met? She replies, but we don't have strong enough magic to become holy knights. But most important is that how to spontaneously acted earlier. Taking on monsters for total stranger regardless of danger, that was impressive. You might just have what it takes to become a holy knight. Then he gets dressed and reaches the village people. He is welcomed and then there is a party for him. Percival asks everyone there about Ironside but no one tells him because no one knows about Ironside. Then suddenly a knight dressed in black comes floating in the air and says while I was searching for a lively kid that defeated my familiar and came here. I have received reports that the grandfather and grandchild were dealt with. Don't tell me Varghese is alive too. Percival asks, how do you know grandpa's name? Meanwhile, the magician's leader says to the knight that you apologize to this boy right now, his grandpa is dead. You can't talk to him like that. Even if you are a holy knight, you will not be forgiven. The knight gestures with his hand and he falls away. Percival asks, who are you? How do you know my grandpa and father? The knight replies, I am the black knight, Pelagard, a fellow of your grandfather and father. Then at the same time they both get ready to fight each other. Percival attacks and kicks him back quite a distance with full force. Pelagard thinks how this kid is fighting me like this without a weapon. Maybe he is using some magic. Then during the fight they keep attacking each other but finally Pelagard grabs him and starts beating him. 
The whole incident is also watched by the Red Fox. Suddenly, a power surges into Percival's hands which causes him to punch him backwards. He is surprised and asks Percival if you said you don't have any magic then how are you doing all this? What is overflowing from you? When Percival looks at his hands, he is frightened by the magic and shouts that it is not mine. By doing this, as he touches the knight, he falls further away. Donnie tells him, that is most likely your magic, use it to beat him up. Pelagard says if it is a granting magic power to his fists, that would make it an incantation type. Percival tells him, I can't use magic before, so can I fight you now? Pelagard says let's start the fight and does his fireball magic named Pyre. Percival blocks his attack but those fireballs then converge and fall on him. Pelagard says those flames burn its target to nothing. Unless I cancel the spell they will never go out, now you surrender. Alva says to him, you surrender, if you die here, you lose everything. Percival replies, no I can't lose, after that he disperses the magic from his arms and coats his whole body. Meanwhile, Pelagard's body is covered with magic golems and he has to finish his magic spell. The magic drains from him and all his wounds are suddenly healed. Seeing all this, Pelagard wonders what kind of magic that Percival has. If it's one of those knights, they'll be out to get it soon and it is futile to kill him. Then Percival goes to him and punches him hard and says let's start the fight again. Pelagard angrily casts his second magic. He moves towards Percival and says you can't beat me because you are inexperienced. Donnie comes there and uses his magic due to which the knight starts floating in the air. Donnie tells him, run away quickly now you have no chance to escape. Percival says, but I have to ask him the location of my father. Then the knight angrily casts his second magic and uses his full power. A huge fireball forms and they all fall away and the knight moves towards them but the same red fox comes before him with the Percival's baggage in its mouth. The fox wags its tail and a ball appears, the ball breaks and the three of them disappear from there. The black knight stands there and is shocked to see this. The three of them reach a strange place. Donnie tells him, it is in a strange mountain 30 miles away from our village Payson. Percival says, I am worried about the others. Let's head back quickly. The fox says to him, I just saved you, don't do anything reckless, the black knight wants you both. He should not have any business left in the village. Both of them are very surprised to see the fox talking. The fox says to Percival, you are coming with me, I will explain to you a bit more, it is something to do with your father as well. Then the fox tells them about the black knight that he serves an evil king and is part of the group who targets the four knights of the apocalypse. The four knights of the apocalypse will appear in a not so long future. It is a knight group who was prophesied to appear. Further it tells them, I got orders from a group that opposes them and finally found one of them. Four holy knights who will destroy the world with four calamities. Then it tells to Percival, you are one of them. Then the knights are shown where they are being told that. There are additional important details regarding the prophecy. According to this, the probability of the search for the four knights of the apocalypse will remarkably increase. The black knight goes to them and sits there. It is further stated that, we are able to identify them. The four knights of the apocalypse are all young boys. There is a high possibility that they are not holy knights. There is also abstract information about them. One is a boy with golden magical power. One is a boy with holiness and evil on his eyes. One is a big mysterious boy with no fixed appearance and the other one is a boy with green hair. We need to find them first and dispose of them quickly. Ironside wonders if Percival is one of them too but I haven't checked to see if he's dead. Pelagard stands behind him and says I think you had feelings for him. But to think that Ironside he assassin has failed to dispose of him. Ironside asks him, the way you are speaking, is that kid still alive? He replies, yes I had a fight with him, he really was one of the knights in the prophecy. Instead of killing him, it would be better to make him our ally and train him well. Ironside hits him on the head with his sword and says that child is going to destroy the world. The fox tells Percival that, as the four knights of the apocalypse, in the near future you are going to destroy the world. Percival says but I am not a holy knight, once I beat my father up, I will go on an adventure to a mysterious place in Britannia. I won't become a knight that will destroy the world. The fox replies, anyway, I was ordered to look for you and bring you back with me. Percival asks if I go with you, will I be able to meet my father? I know him and his comrade, they are in Camelot. Donnie tells him, Camelot is a kingdom that got destroyed in the holy war against the demon clan 16 years ago. With one hit from the demon king, destroyed everything without a trace. They say the king went into hiding, with his few surviving knights and citizens. Camelot doesn't exist anymore. The fox says, I affirm you that Camelot is still existing. However, there is no normal path to go there. To arrive there, first you need to go to Lyoni's kingdom and I am not a fox, so call me Sin. Then they both get ready to go with it to the Lyoni's kingdom. 
They get hungry on the way and Percival takes out his bow and arrows for hunting. Dooney takes his bow and arrows and says, go and hunt with empty hands. While looking for prey, he finds many rocks and climbs on them. Climbing over the rocks, he sees an echo gorge and two little flying humans see him going inside. Donnie shoots an arrow at the deer to hunt it but it misses and hits a huge nun named Dolores. They go and say sorry to her but she tells them I was praying, I am also sorry. Meanwhile Bob and Nob, the two little flying men, Come there and tell them that there is a human with a strange helmet entering the Echo Gorge. Donnie tells them he is our friend but is there something wrong? They tell him, it was an abundant and beautiful place not long ago, but now it is a living hell. Then they all go that way to rescue Percival. The monsters like trees and animals attack Percival but he drives them away. Then he hears someone calling for help, he goes that way. There is a house where a bear is trapped by a magician named Nassians, who used a weird medicine making all living creatures and the gorge become violent. Percival goes into the house and frees the guinea pig but gets stuck there himself. Nassians knocks him unconscious and says I will use this boy in exchange for that guinea pig. They reach Echo Gorge. Donnie says that is certainly a place that kid will be curious about. The fox says, if something happens to him, I will be in trouble. Nassians undresses Percival and ties him with ropes to his laboratory. When Percival regains consciousness then says to him, give me my helmet and cloak back, my grandpa gave those to me. Nassian says your clothes are all scorched and in tatters, you can't wear it anymore after all. Then tells that your cloak and helmet are lying there on top of the wardrobe. Those are rare magic items with strong magical powers. Nassian injects his body and says the drug should take effect in an hour. But Percival becomes conscious at the same time. Nassian is surprised to see that and thinks I may have injected wrong things. Percival asks him, what are you going to do and what were you going to do with that pig? Nassian says I was using him as a guinea pig but he did invade my home and attack me first. I need test subjects for drugs. Percival asks, you bit him that's why your mouth was bleeding. He replies, it's my habit since childhood, I bite my lip when I'm happy. Percival asks what mixture you are making now what are you going to do? Nassian says now you are going to die, I have a mission that I want to accomplish. He breaks the ropes and puts on his cloak and helmet and says, I also have a mission that I want to fulfill. I need to find my father and beat him up for killing my grandpa. Then I am going to see all the amazing sights of Britannia. Nassians takes out both of his magic daggers and attacks him and says, All I want is test subject for those drug, but I cannot test it on myself. If I die, I cannot finish the drug or save the gorge. Percival hits him, causing it to fall away, and the drug bounces into his hand. Percival drinks all the drug. After that a lot of energy comes into him and runs out of the house and shouts loudly. Nassians also follows him outside and says why did you do such a dangerous thing by drinking it? Percival asks did you make it to save the gorge, then did it work or not? Nassians replies this drug has worked thanks to you, now I can save the gorge. Then he drinks the drug left in the beaker and falls on the ground. Others also reach there and Donnie asks him what happened to you. Percival tells them all about Nassians that he wants to save Gorge. Then Nassians says to them, Ordo. Bob and Nob tell them about Ordo that he is an old apothecary that once lived here. He came here back when Dolores and Nassians were still not around. We asked him what are you doing here? He said this place is a treasure trove of resources and I don't want to recklessly damage this beautiful Gorge. Then he started living with us. One day we met a very huge girl and she also started living with us. Then one day we found a human baby that someone had abandoned here. Ordo raised him, took care of him and taught him many experiments. And then one day, Ordo disappeared from Gorge and from then on Nassian started doing these weird experiments. Nassian gets up and says I need to spread the drug around the Gorge. This place has been decomposing faster in the past few days. Meanwhile Bob and Nob's family members start pelting him with stones and say that you are planning to destroy Gorge. Percival stops and tells them, Nassians he was making a drug that will save the whole gorge. Suddenly there is a blue poisonous gas that causes a large part of the forest to wither and the animals die. Then he does a magic with his hands and says, when I ingest a poison, I teach it to my body and then I can freely create and mix my own. That is called mix venom. Like the magic rain, it spreads over the forest and rejuvenates the withered forest. Even dead animals come alive. Percival asks him, why do you call it poison? Nassians tells them, to heal the sick or wounded, you must learn all about poison. It was something my grandfather Ordo always said, no life can be saved without knowing your poison. Dolores cuts Percival's hair and cuts his hair and dresses him in the clothes that she made for Nassians. Bob comes to Nassians with his family and says please forgive us, we thought your drugs destroy the gorge and we treated you so badly. Nassians tells them, the monster's going crazy, that was a side effect of my medicine. 
Bob asks why did that happen to the gorge in the first place. He says to them, once Ordo disappeared, something started eating the life force of everything. Percival goes to Nassian's to show off his clothes. Nassian says to them, Not apologize to me, you should thank that kid instead. A poison that beat the deadly disease, mixed the wrong way, could have wiped out the gorge, but he served as my guinea pig. They all thank Percival and he is delighted. The fox comes to Nassian's and says, This forest disease did not just affect plant and animal life, it even seeped into the gorge soil. Then they see a demon-like creature enter the canyon hole. Nassians recognizes him and tells them, he is Ordo. He then runs towards Ordo but Dolores stops him. Ordo releases poisonous gas from his mouth into the forest. Nassians stops him but he grabs Nassians in his hand and grabs him. Dolores grabs his hand to stop him and asks why are you hurting your own family. He also burns her with his gas and she falls on the ground and faints. Meanwhile, that flying bear comes there and says to Percival, This all happened because you got in my way in the first place. A kid like you cannot understand the solemn, detached beauty of death. The fox says, That is the guy who turned the druggist into that. The flying bear says to Ordo that atone for your sins and destroy this gorge. Then Ordo moves towards them but Percival stops him with a kick. Percival hugs Nassians and says we will bring back your grandpa. A holy knight arrives and kills both the flying bear and Ordo. They ask you who you are. He replies, I am a holy knight serving the everlasting kingdom, the Amber Knight, Talisker. Percival says he is also Ironside's companion. Nassian says him, please turn Ordo back to normal right now, what did Ordo ever do to you? Talisker lands on the ground and says, land a single blow on me and I will tell you and if you somehow defeat me then I will turn him back. Further he says to Nassians, you create and spread poison and even apply it to objects. Then Nassians runs towards him to fight. Talisker makes a hailstorm with his magic but Percival intervenes and saves him. Suddenly, Ordo hits Nassians hard and then again punches him but Percival stops it. Percival says to Ordo, don't blindly listen to him. Nassians keep the gorge safe for you and then Ordo becomes normal again. Talisker casts hail impact magic on Ordo but Percival blocks all hailstorm and falls injured. Talisker is shocked to see this. Then Percival does his same yellow magic and his height also grows and that magic covers him. Talisker again works his magic on him but Percival blocks it and throws all the hail back at him. Percival says to him, just like you said before, first I will land a blow so you will reveal everything and then I will beat you so you will put Nassian's grandpa back to normal. Talisker attacks him with his weapon but Percival defends it and Talisker falls backwards. Then Talisker says you defend well but you truly think you can strike me unarmed. Percival hits him with a huge magic hand and pins him to the ground, then asks him, why did you do that to Nassian's grandpa? He was a kind man, giving medicine to the fairies and taking in a stray giant as a family. Why did you make him a monster? Talisker replies, because that is sin, rescuing races besides humans. It is simply outrageous. What my Lord Arthur wants is a land where humanity lives in peace, no other race extant to threaten it. I want him. He was committing a grave crime. I advised him to stop this nonsense, forsake other races and focus only on us. So I gave him his punishment. I made him a monster driven by an impulse to destroy and a duty to menace the world. I said, destroy the gorge or else I will. If you don't want me to do it, you must do it yourself. Then he spread poison to rot the gorge himself, chasing all the species out. Percival says, for that ridiculous reason you stomped all over the hearts of Nassians and his grandpa. Talisker strikes them with very strong lightning with his magic but Percival prevents it again. Talisker is very surprised to see this and thinks that this is the same boy that was mentioned as that boy with green, feather-like, hair. He is one of the four knights of the apocalypse. Percival attacks him but he escapes and says, I can take out this kid here. The doomsday prophecy for King Arthur will be gone for good. He flies towards the sky. The fox says to Percival, your magic's formed from whatever's on your mind try to picture a weapon that will kill him in one shot. Talisker attacks back at him with all his magic calamity bird. This includes both lightning and hail. Percival blocks it and then attacks him with his magical sword that hits him with such force that even the mountain breaks. Seeing this Donnie says, that is insane. He blew that holy knight away with the whole mountain. The fox comes to Percival and says, you beat him, you can turn it off now. In such a long time, Dolores also wakes up. Seeing her, Sunny says, it is a giant zombie. Nassian says to him, don't call my sister a zombie. Donnie says, but she got blasted with poison breath and turned pitch black. Hearing this, the fox says to them, it must be heavy metal. The giant's clan got this magic that makes their bodies metal for self-defense. So just before she got creamed, that lady launched heavy metal on herself and given her instant reaction time. I am guessing she's had a decent amount of battle training. 
Then all the metal falls off her and she recovers as before. Bassians thinks that. Ordo said, My dream is to turn this gorge into Britannia's medicine box and then people who suffered disease and injuries also I want to heal and save all races. Bassians cries and says, Because of the love of Ordo for this gorge, that is why I tried to protect it. Percival says to him, I promised to get your grandpa back, but I could not. Then they see a small wooden stick. Percival asks, What is that? The fox tells him that Taliski dropped it when you floored him and then the fox breaks it by kicking it. As soon as it breaks, Ordo releases a purple gas and all magic dissipates and he slowly returns to his normal state. Nassians is very happy to see him again and runs and hugs him and says I thought I would never see you again. They both hug each other and start crying. Seeing this scene, tears flow in everyone's eyes. Then they leave for their journey. Donnie asks the fox, what was that stick that made him into a monster? The fox replies, it was a chaos staff, they are infused with chaotic force. The king of Camelot hands them out to his knights. Donnie asks, why are they carrying those around? Percival says, I have made up my mind. I thought my job was done once I found my father and beat him up. But after meeting Nassians and fighting Talisker, I have made up my mind. I am going to whip the king of Camelot too. I don't want anyone else to go through what I had to. Let's get going to Lyonis. Then he asks, how did our find the biggest baddest prey game work out? I actually caught 10 or so mutilator rabbits. Donnie says, let's just call it off. The fox says to them, your haul is zero after all, I won this game. Then it wags its tail and a dead rabbit falls into it. The fox says, this is an ultramarine mutilator rabbit. They go for 20 times the normal rate. And the rule said, the winner gets to give one order to the losers. Meanwhile, Nassians comes running to them and says I want to come along with you. I owe you for saving Ordo in this gorge. I make a point out of not owning favors. Percival asks him, but what about your grandpa and the others? He says, Ordo told me to leave and learn about the world. He said to me, you don't need to worry about the gorge. I will study the drug you have created and make the forest more abundant than before. Dolores said to me, if anything happens you can always come back home. Further he says to Percival, I want to be a better druggist than him someday and I can't have you just go on me. You are kind of my first guinea pig after all. Donnie asks, but why is he suddenly asking to come with us? The fox says, maybe his magic and knowledge of poisons will help us out. Donnie says, I am against it, he is a creepy downer. The fox replies, remember, I get to give one order to you. Dolores says crying, it is just that I have never seen that look on Nassian's face before. Ordo says, he has finally met a fellow person, he can call a friend. Percival says to Nassians, let's get going. Donnie asks on the way, we are traveling to Lyonis right now, any place nearby we can find some transport. Nassians tells him, there is Sistana, a town north of here, Ordo and I will go there to sell medicine. A town is then shown where a house party is taking place. A man stands there named Duke Calden, his daughter is also standing with him. Ironside goes there and says to him, thank you for inviting me to tonight's ball. He says, welcome here, Lord Ironside. Ironside asks him, how is the search going that we talked about? We have confirmed that it's within this town. Duke says, we have turned up nothing, I am afraid but I will continue the search. Ty Girl Anne looks at his father and thinks you are lying. Further Ironside says to him, I truly appreciate your efforts. By the name of his majesty the king, we will save this town from the evils of Lyonis. But your daughter, how lovely she has become since last we met. I would love for my son to meet her, assuming she wishes to. Her father tells her to answer him, but she doesn't answer. Ironside says, My lady, should you find it, please inform your father. It is an ancient relief showing a crowd in prayer. A piece of the coffin of eternal darkness, that's what we call it. Donnie catches fish with his magic and Percival orders many Percivals, but they do not listen to him. He says, they won't listen to my order. The fox says, you know, they are magic derived from your disposition and emotional state. Nassians tells them, if I feed a poison to a mini Percival, it changes color. The fox asks Percival, when you beat Talisker, were you picturing a sword? Percival takes out a knife from his luggage and makes it big like a sword and tells them, this is a carving knife I received from my grandpa. The fox says, no matter how you look at it, it is a magic sword. Percival says, it is a carving knife, that is what grandpa call it. Nassian says, if I recall, you said the helmet and the clock were mementos. Who was your grandfather? Percival says, I don't really know he was a holy knight like Ironside, that's what I need to find Ironside. Nassian says, I still have my doubts, Camelot fell 16 years ago, but it is both still around and accessible from the kingdom of Lyonis. Percival replies, no, the fox is not lying. After eating Donnie lies down and says, it feels heavy to walk while resting. It would be much easier if we could fly around with magic. 
Suddenly he gets up and says to the fox, the magic orbs from that time. Percival says, if we use one of those we can get to Lyones in a flash. The fox says to them, I am out of them, that was the last one. Meanwhile Nassians tells them that it is said that Merlin the mage, one of the legendary knights, the seven deadly sins, created them. Those are orbs with assorted magic effects. But Merlin also got an ancient book describing all the poisons of the world. Then they walk to a town and there they find a piece of a picture buried in the ground. Duke's daughter comes there and says, who are all of you? Put that down and leave here at once, but if you are handing it over to that man, I will kill all of you. Donnie tells her, we just found it by accident. She says, how did you accidentally find something that was buried in the ground? Then she takes out her rapier and fights with Donnie and knocks him down. Then fights with Nassians and knocks him down too and asks them, do you work for holy knights? Percival hands her the picture. She has a magic with the help of which she can know anything wrong or hidden inside any human being. She looks at Donnie and Nassians and realizes that they are lying, but when she sees Percival, she doesn't see anything like that. Percival tells her, the mini Percivals did it. The fox asks her, who is this holy knight that you are whining about? Meanwhile her servant arrives there and says to her, please come back at once. My lord is quite angry at you. She hides the piece in Percival's cloak and tells him to hide it, not to show it to anyone in town, and especially never to Ironside. Then she leaves. After this, Nassians tells them, her name is Angelhad. She is the daughter of the town's lord. I saw her many times on sales trips here with Ordo. Donnie asks, what is this thing that she was hiding? The fox replies, it is my first time seeing it in real life too. It is a piece of the coffin of eternal darkness, which is a magic item of legend, crafted by a giant. Percival says, I am going to find Ironside. The way she said he must be coming to this town, I am going to talk to him about Grandpa. The fox says, do you think you can beat him? Because judging by your story there are chances that townspeople will get caught up in it. Let's make sure this thing is real first, like, can you avenge your grandpa with your power? And why is your father looking for the coffin? We got time to figure out all that first. Duke says to his daughter, enough with your wandering outside, we have no idea what disaster may befall our town. She says, is that what that man Ironside told you? Why do you insist on trusting him? He speaks nothing but nonsense and lies. Father, even you know about my mysterious power. He says, don't use that power that is just going to hurt you. She says, but mother called it a gift from God. Duke says, Ironside is a holy knight who protected people alongside your mother. For now, we just have to trust and obey him. We don't know what he will do if we disobey him. This is to avoid putting the townspeople in danger. She says, obeying him does not mean that we will be safe. He says, you are still a child, just hush up and listen to me. She says, I am not a child, I am already 16 years old. Someday, I am going to be a holy knight. If a crisis befalls this town, I will defend it. So quit being that strange man's lapdog. He angrily slaps her on the face and says stay in the room now and then leaves. There's a party gathering in town where Ironside arrives and people are seeing him wondering what he's going to talk to us about. Percival and his colleagues are also watching all of them from a hidden place. Ironside says to townspeople, The reason I came here tonight is to inform you of a threat to your town and how to quell it. He opens a box in front of them, which contains an incomplete relief that is missing the piece that Percival has hidden. The fox says, if he completes that relief, it will be hell for all of us. Percival asks, what happens if he completes that relief? The fox replies, that magic item was originally created to seal away the demon clan. The goddess clan sacrificed themselves to trigger it. If he activated it, there would be no goddesses around now. Instead of the goddess clan, your father is planning to sacrifice the townspeople. Luckily, we have the last piece, we gotta leave the town with that fragment. Ironside says to townspeople, This coffin of eternal darkness depicts fairies, giants, goddesses, a dragon of chaos and humanity. This is an item crafted for use in ancient rituals. Since the other day, I have been asking for your help in finding the final piece. Duke says, If we complete this relic, he will hold a ritual that will protect Sistana from disaster. Please help us. Ironside says, The four knights of the apocalypse prophesied to destroy the world. The kingdom of Lyones is gathering these dreadful demons in an attempt to wipe Britannia off the map. Meanwhile, and comes there and says to citizens, don't let this man trick you, most of what he says are lies. Her father forbids her, but Ironside says that she is a child and that is why she is speaking like that. And says, I am capable of seeing whether you are telling the truth or lies, it is part of my magic power. Ironside holds her wrist and says then I will not let it pass. The fox says, now we should leave here then everyone gets down but Percival jumps in and stops Ironside. 
Ironside says you were alive. You came to avenge your grandfather or are you trying to take the coffin? Percival runs and grabs Anne's hand and drives her away. Ironside does his cross magic on them but they escape. Duke says to him, if my daughter falls victim to it. Ironside says, then it will be sacrificed for a great cause. And servant steals the piece and becomes a demon named Darak similar to Ironside and flies away and gives the piece to Ironside. Ironside activates the fragment by inserting it into the coffin. Duke tries to stop them but Derek knocks him down with his magic. The fox says, activating the relic requires a blood sacrifice. If he kills everybody in this town, he wins. We gotta destroy the coffin of eternal darkness. Either take one of the pieces and we will win. The fox asks, would you guys like to do that? Percival says, I will do this, I can't let him have his way. Donnie and Nassian says, we will help you. Anne says, I will join you as well, I am the Lord's daughter. I have a duty to protect this town. The fox named Sin says to them, Ironside is going to start this ritual right now, there is not a single moment to lose. You all go and beat him, I will prepare for what might happen. And you Percival, don't you dare try seriously fighting him. Let the mission begin. Meanwhile Anne notes with her magic that the fox is hiding something. Then they all leave for the mission. While running they introduce themselves to each other. And tells them, he wanted to marry me off to his son, I'm sure his son is just as bad as him. Ironside magic over the coffin and says to seal them away once more, I offer their blood and soul to the coffin. Come to me, O chaotic dead, pour the blood of their sacrifice into the coffin of eternal darkness. Around him, a black liquid comes out of the ground, which rises up and spreads into the town. And wherever that liquid falls, huge monsters come out. Ironside says to Derek, You will command the chaotic dead, make them all sacrifices and don't let any escape. Donnie says they are using those creatures to collect sacrifices. Anne says, that fox is lying to you about something. I can tell because I have that kind of power. They all run to where Duke is lying unconscious, Ironside is also there. He says to Percival, what do you want to do this time? Normally, I'd want to snuff you out right now, but tonight is busy for me. Percival says, stop this ritual right now. Ironside does one of his magic and all three get scared. And says, that man won't hesitate for a moment to kill us. Percival runs and hits him with his magic hand but he stops and says you need to be taught some discipline. I truly doubt this, but do you intend to fight me? Percival throws many Percivals at the coffin, but they also disappear as his magic runs out. Ironside says, you are after the coffin and you know what our goals are as well. He then performs his cross magic on them, but they all escape. Then he says to Percival, you simply have no discipline, don't let me repeat myself. Donnie, we must flee from here, even if we were children, he would not let us go. We have nothing to do with this town in the first place. Nassian says, I am not going, I know too well what it is like to defend your homeland. Then, Donnie runs away from there. Percival attacks again with his magical sword but Ironside defends himself and breaks it. Percival falls down, then Anne joins him in the fight and fights with Ironside. She says, I will become a knight and I will defend this town with my father, just like my mother did. We all want to save those we hold dear. Ironside says to her, not only are you good with swords but you have guts. The fact you even landed a scratch on me. He stands on the ground with his sword and says, I am going numb, what did you do? But this happens because of the magic of Nassians that he is doing on the Ironside saying that I took the liberty of enchanting the paralysis effect. Enchant mix venom henbane. Ironside says, look at all of you, no discipline at all. Are you that driven to get a taste of despair? I will bring it to you. Then he casts his special magic named Belfast Margaret. Anne's father becomes conscious and runs and grabs his daughter to save her from the spell. Donnie tries to run away from the town but he sees monsters everywhere. At one point, he sees a woman and a small child trapped and a monster is trying to eat them. Percival saves all his friends by absorbing all of the magic. Ironside says to him, you did well to protect your friends. If you are left to grow up you will clearly become a fearsome threat. Percival asks him, why did you kill my grandpa? He replies, if there is even a slight chance, he is part of the four knights of the apocalypse. Anne attacks him but he defends himself and she falls backwards. Percival begins to break the coffin with magic but Ironside knocks him down and his magic wears off. Then Ironside thrusts his sword into his hand and then hits his foot hard on his head and says when this ritual is complete I will make Lyonis, the present tome in my side, crumble. And when I take care of you, the four knights of the apocalypse will never form a complete group then plunges his sword into his stomach and kills Percival, then says all his magic power has vanished now. It is the end of the four nights of the apocalypse that horrid prophecy. Now to complete the coffin of eternal darkness ritual for good. 
Then he raises his hand to the coffin and says now, May my chaotic dead massacre the residents of Sistama. Nassians pulls peaceable to him and tries to drug him, but he can't drink anyway. He doesn't move. Donnie uses his magic to float monster into the air. Then he runs back to them and thinks we don't have to fight them, we just have to destroy the coffin. They see just a tiny bit of magic on Percival. Ironside is surprised to see that I killed him and still have magic left on him. Then he does his cross magic on him again but Nassians blocks it and gets injured. Ironside says to him, Your paralyzing poison has drastically affected my magic's precision. If you value your life, can you get out of the way now? Nassians says I will not back down. Then Ironside does his cross magic on him again. But more magic is rising from Percival. Their many many Percivals get together, and fights with Ironside so that Percival can recover. Her hairs are cut with his sword but she says even if I die, I will never bow down to a trash like you. Donnie also comes there and says crush the evil, rescue the weak and be someone who risks their life for what they hold dear. Then there are many many Percivals covering them all around. Ironside does his magic to destroy them all, creating a huge crater in the ground. But he is left watching as Percival's giant wings come out and he is far away in the air. But he is surprised to see Percival's huge wings come out and he is in the air far away. And his companions sit on his wings. Percival says, In the darkness, I heard you all calling me and I finally came. This is my magic but not only my own. All of you believed in me and those feelings within you gave me power. This is my magic, hope. Ironside says converting people's feelings into your power. It seems I underestimated you a little bit. But even if you buy a little time, nothing will change. Soon, this town will meet its end, and the ritual will begin. Monsters are eating the townspeople and Derek is giving them orders saying, Don't let anyone escape. Make them sacrifices. We are going to activate the coffin of eternal darkness at all costs. There comes a boy with knives in his hand and he starts killing the monsters with each of his knives. Ironside asks Derek, Are the sacrifices ready yet? I have set the stage for the ritual. Derek panicked and tells him that I don't understand. All the monsters are dying. Ironside asks, who is doing it and how many people are they? To see this, Derek lands on the ground and approaches the monsters, but the boy kills him along with the monsters. Seeing this all, Percival tells Ironside that you have lost. Ironside replies, it seems so, you have grown so much in such a short time. Then he throws away his sword and says we will never meet again. I will be called to task for my failure and executed. Further he says, my son, let me see your face one last time, so I may call it in my moment of death. And says to Percival, don't be fooled by him. He is all lies. I recognize him through my magic. His ritual is foiled and now all he wants is to kill you. Ironside says to her, you are irritating every fiber of me, little girl. Then says to Percival, I will make sure to end your life. He throws his cross magic at them but they don't get hit and Percival carries them in the air so fast that they stay away from the magic. Then they make a new plan to confront Ironside. Percival draws his attention and Donnie lifts the coffin with his magic in the air. Then Percival breaks the coffin with his magic. As soon as the coffin breaks down, Ironside takes off his face cover and shows them. He says to Percival, Now you have done it, as much of a failure as you are. You think you have stopped me now. All I have to do is kill you and assemble the coffin of eternal darkness and even if Sistana won't provide the sacrifices, Britannia is crawling with more. All you have done is ever so slightly delay the ritual, your life ends here. Meanwhile, another knight named Mortlatch comes there and holds Ironside's hand and says, Your night ends here. You are frustrated at the ritual being ruined, and you are duty bound not to let a four knights of the apocalypse escape. But the problem is the mystery enemy who defeated the dead. Ironside asks, You know who they are. Mortlatch replies, No, but I assumed you have summoned greater level dead and this foe just instantly wiped them out. If any kind of monster like that exists, it must be the legendary heroes, the seven deadly sins or someone with just as much fighting power. So, we are in danger, wouldn't it be best to retreat for now? Then they both disappear from there. Percival also takes them all down to earth, and says to Donnie, if Percival were not here, we would all be dead right now. Percival says, we stopped him because we all work together. Then Anne's father also comes there and they both are very happy to meet each other. She says to them, forgive me, I could not understand you when you were obeying him. Sin comes there, they all rush to it and ask who killed the monsters inside the town. Sin tells them, they were my forest pals. Then Percival is very happy and jumps around with joy. Then Camelot is shown where Ironside is sitting on his knees in front of their Lord Arthur. Arthur resents him about the mission and says this was a great opportunity for us to eliminate Lyonis. But you have failed miserably, having come back from losing a child badly even if he was one of the four knights of the apocalypse. Ironside says I won't make any excuses, punish me the way you want. 
Then the monsters grab him and start taking something out of his body. Arthur says, from the ancient past to the holy war 16 years ago, mankind has suffered caught in war with other species. A lane with no pain, no sadness, where no one is left exposed to any kind of threat or calamity. That's why I built this Camelot. I wish to free the entire Britannia from mankind. As long as these threats remain we will never have true repose. I am sure even you don't wish to forsake the benefits of Camelot, so do not disappoint me with these careless errors. Those monsters drain all the poison from his body then Ironside says I solemnly swear to travel to Britannia and defeat Percival. Arthur says, I have got an even more important favor to ask, we have been forestalled at every turn off this battle, it irks me so because our opponent have the vision. The only way we may learn of the future is to intercept it. But I have found something even better than that. I am asking you to search for my bride. Duke says to Percival, I can hardly imagine what this town would be now without you. I cannot thank you enough. I understand you are the son of Ironside. He was acquainted with my wife. They were both holy knights in the service of King Arthur of Camelot. She said he was a noble, upright man, constantly striving to do good. Meanwhile Anne comes there and says to her father, I really do want to become a holy knight. But fighting Ironside taught me that just how little actual experience and power I have. So, I want to set off, so I can become a fine holy knight. One who can protect, what is vital someday even if I am all alone. Duke says, I understand exactly how you feel, but I cannot let you journey alone. Percival says, you should come along with us. Donnie says, well, it is not like I hate a lively journey. Nassian says, we already consider her as our friend. Duke tells his daughter that you are brave just like your mother and then tearfully tells her that I will always be proud of you. Anne goes on a journey with them on a horse named Sylvan. On the way, Percival asks Sin, what on earth is Ironside trying to do? Sin says, one thing is for sure, he will eventually appear before you. Percival asks, it is because I am the four knights of the apocalypse that will destroy the world. Then he becomes sad. Sin says to him, if you are anxious, then become stronger, strong enough to send your father and fate flying. Percival says, if I am together with everyone, I feel like I can become even more stronger. Anne is very happy. She says this is my glorious quest to become a holy knight. Donnie says to her, let us ride the horse. Your father promised us that if we save the town he will give us transport. She says Sylvan has been my best friend since childhood, so I will only ride it. Donnie says it means you have no friends. Percival says to her, but we are all your friends already. Anne says, don't talk to me like that, I don't see people like that. Percival goes up to the horse and touches it. The horse kicks him and he falls off flying into the air. Nassian says, we don't even have a wagon to go. Anne says, don't talk to me like that or I will leave you guys here. But after going further, the horse gets tired and falls down and they all have to stop there. Anne says to them, I have always wanted to go the Lyonese kingdom. It is the homeland of the most renowned holy knights in all of Britannia. Their ruler is King Meliodas, who is the leader of the seven deadly sins. Percival asks, what are the seven deadly sins? Anne says, despite being branded as traitors to the kingdom, they saved Lyonese countless times. They are a group of holy knights who defeated the king of the demon clan in the holy war. That is the seven deadly sins. Then she shows them a poster and says, this is my treasure. It is a poster from back when Meliodas was a wanted man. She says, I forgot the most important thing. Who is going to be the leader? From now on, we need someone to unite us as a team. She says to Percival, you may be the best fighter here but you are more mascot material. She says to Nassians, you do seem cool-headed, good strategist material. Then she also tells Donnie that you too can't be a leader. Further she says, there is no choice but me to be a leader, so I will gladly be a leader. Percival says, but Donnie is really good too, townspeople thanked him when we left. Meanwhile Sin gets up and says now leave the discussion and some talk about our plans. Then Sin wags its tail and brings out a map, then says here is a map of southern Britannia. To reach Lyonis, we are going to cross the Dalflare mountain range. We will prepare at Kant, the nearest post town. And takes Sun in her hands and says, I want to reach the Lyonis as soon as I can. Let's just cross those mountains. Sin tells her, Dalflare is a dark realm, woman. Almost nobody makes it over them alive. You rush in there and boom, you will die. Then a bar is shown where a Lyonis holy knight named Hauser is drinking. Donnie thinks about a past memory, when both he and his brother Eslin were showing off their master by playing swordsmanship because they wanted to become holy knights. Master Hauser said to them, you are both steadily improving your skills, but you cannot become a holy knight just by having sword skills and magic alone. 
What matters is how to use that power. I will teach you how to use power properly, and I will train you both. They reach the town of Kant, which consists of a few houses and looks like a mountain tower. They all go inside the town and everyone starts looking at the shops there at their own will. Massian sees a forge there and Percival sees a place where a sumo wrestling match is taking place. They go inside a hotel and tell him that we need a room for five people. He asks them to give 22 silver coins. and has their all money so they wait for her but she buys things, clothes and favors for them with all their money. Sin gets angry and says I gave you 10 gold and you wasted it all. Now we have to camp outside and spend the night. Anne says to Percival to pick up the bag and be with me, I'm bringing the money. Donnie goes to the bar taking Nassians with him and orders a drink. Master Hauser is also sitting there. He gets up and goes to Donnie. Donnie turns back and looks at him and is horrified. Master Hauser picks up his wine and drinks it and says you fled holy night training to be a traveling entertainer. So is drinking part of your act? Nassians asks Donnie, do you know him? He replies, he is Hauser, Lyoni's great holy knight, he is my uncle. Then a man is telling to his boss that, the marks split into two groups and Hauser is talking one of the marks at the bar but he will pass out from the drink soon. Anne and Percival go to where the wrestling is taking place. Percival defeats all the wrestlers there and both of them leave after winning a lot of money. Donnie asks Hauser, is my brother doing well as a holy knight? Hauser says, I will not tell a cowardly man about this. Then he asks Donnie angrily, what is this thing in your hand? Donnie says, it is a piece of the coffin of eternal darkness. Hauser says, where did you steal it from? You used to steal silver coins from my wallet. Do you even know what this is? Donnie says, it is for sealing away the demon clan. Hauser slaps him and says, if it falls in the wrong hands, Lyonis will be wiped out. I was a fool to think I could ever count on you. A lad is spineless as you can't protect anyone. I am glad you gave up on being a holy knight. Meanwhile Anne and Percival comes there with a bundle of silver coins. Percival tells them, all these we won by betting. Hauser takes all the coins from them and does not return them. Bassian says to him, give back what you took from Donnie and return these coins to us. Hauser says I don't want to fight a kid then they both compete with drinking. While drinking, Nassians tells them, there is something odd about this whole town. At first I thought I was imagining things, but I am growing more and more sure of it. In the forge, they sold mounds of armor and shields with the royal emblem. Those are added to special orders, not offered for regular sale. Then that home goods shop, the things Anne bought were all priced the same, despite every item being different. All the goods in this town are likely fenced and that led me to the third oddity. Suddenly Percival and Anne both fall unconscious and Hauser says to Nassians that you are too late to understand. All the people present take out their weapons to kill Nassians. Meanwhile a boy and some of his friends come there. He says to Hauser, you have come to the wrong place. Hauser says to him, so about you right there, you have become a bandit. Nassians asks Hauser about that boy. Hauser replies, he is Edlin, my apprentice and he is Donnie's senior. After that episode ends, watch this left video and subscribe to Annie Summary for more anime recaps.